Does Jagex plan on doing anything else other than recycling remedial RS3 content? Are the new weapons and drops from the tormented demons even worth the trouble? Why are we getting more Demon Bane weapons? And who is Jagex trying to cater to with the release of this content? Welcome to my video. I'm Tomb Goblin, and it's time to talk about Old School's newest failed content. Originally, this video was intended to be a Tormented Demons guide, or a loot from 100 Tormented Demons. But after finishing the quest and really analyzing this new mob in its loot, I have been left feeling like this content was a big mistake and us players may be to blame. After completing the newly released yet recycled Grandmaster difficulty quest while Guthic sleeps, straight to the Tormented Demons I went to try to get my hands on some of their precious new drops, only to then realize how lackluster and out of place these new weapons seem. Passing with a dominant 90% in polling, I really want to ask why. What demons in old school do we really care about? I know it's not Kirill Tsutaroff. I'm not too sure I've ever seen anybody in his instance during my time at Bandos. Fortune Gorillas, I guess, are relevant usually only seeing Iron Man hunting their Zenite for their upgrade. And PVMers of that caliber usually just have better ways of making coin. Uh, oh yeah, and Scotizo. Why the fuck did we really let three Demon Bane weapons come to old school? For what? Now looking at Emberlite, it's a non-degradable version of the Arclight with a special attack that debuffs the target's melee stats by 15% instead of Arclight's 10%. What's so wrong with Arclight anyway? It incentivized training your Slayer in the Karen dungeon, and again, considering we don't really care about current in-game demons, including Tormented Demons, there's something with a whole lot more utility we could have brought to old school. Maybe a new weapon like a Biden with slots that would let you freely exchange marquee boss items like the Blood Shard or the Tanzanite Fang and have the weapon adopt the item's passive abilities. Or maybe we could get a new set of armor that would sit somewhere between Bandos and Torva in terms of quality and price. After combining an unstrung magic longbow with the newly tormented Synapse, the Scorching Bow now has a special attack, Scorching Shackles which drains 25% of the player's special attack energy. Fortune Shackles binds a target for 5 ticks, dealing 1 burn damage in the process. Obviously an item geared for PvPers with a passive Demon Bane ability sloppily stapled on its side to make us PvMers feel like it was meant for us. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying the video. With over 99% of my viewers not being subscribed, please take a second and hit those like and subscribe buttons. Purging Staff is able to auto-cast offensive Arceus spells. Casting Demon Bane spells with this staff will double their bonuses. Without going too deep into this piece of shit, it seems like the point of this staff is to try to incentivize players to open up their Arceus spellbook a bit more often, but I'm definitely not convinced. And by far the biggest disappointment so far, the Burning Claws. Without trying to gouge the buying confidence of customers, Jagex released these suckers to the game out of the box, outright saying that they are worse than the already existing Dragon Claws. But why would I not just buy an original set of Dragon Claws? Is there a chance a small bit of burn damage could really make swapping out the classic pair worth it? With level 95 combat being the recommended combat level to complete while Guthic sleeps, these big dick demons come packing a combat level of 450 and their area is multi-combat. With a max hit of 31 and some damage that seemingly cannot be avoided, these fuckers, though easy for some late game players, still do come packing a punch. I would like to take a moment and try to change my perspective and argue that maybe this content was made for mid-level players and not late game players. That still leaves one hell of a grind for a potentially level 95 player. With some of the highest quest requirements in game, and again, the level 450 demon adversaries, there's no way these weapons were made with low to mid tier players in mind. To revisit the question, What's so wrong with Arclight? Being responsible for these new items coming to the game, us players are the only ones to blame. If I had my way, I would send these new weapons and tormented demons and their ridiculously low drop rates right back to the polling phase in between the cheeks of Thurgo. All right, boys, that'll do it for today's video. But you to absolutely fucking demolish those like and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. And if you really want to support this channel and my content creation, please consider becoming a member where you can get honored at the end of each and every video and many other cool benefits. And until next time, you guys, Tomb Goblin out.